Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So it's Tuesday night and I'm going to go ahead with my drops. I have um, three different drops that I have to use tonight. Now my doctor did tell me to uh, insert one drop, leave my eye closed for 30 seconds, and then wait 15 minutes before I put in the next drop. So I am going to, to use the thick one first. It's called uh, Bromsite. So let me go ahead and put this one in my eye. It is one drop. Okay, and I will be back. Okay, I'm back with a second set of drops. This is called the, I can't see it. Uh, Afloxacin. So let me go ahead and get in. Uh, okay, so I will wait. Keep this in my eye for 15 minutes, and I'll be back with a third drop. And then after that, I'm going to talk to y'all because um, I have something that is really bothering me, and I really need to talk to y'all about it tonight. Okay, so I'm back with a third drop. The doctor said I could pat my eye, but don't rub it. Okay, and this is the Envel tea. So let me go ahead and get this one. This is the one that burns. Uh. Okay, so I'm going to leave this in for 15 minutes, and I'll be back, and we'll go in the bedroom, and we'll talk. Okay, so the doctor told me to go ahead and wear this um, plastic cup over my eye for the next three nights. Let's see. Is this how it goes? Let me see, the piece of tape, they were so nice to give me an extra cup and this piece of tape, I don't know, where is Zeus when I need you? <laughs> I think it can go this way. Oh, it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? Anyway, y'all, I'm so upset. You know, I really, really just need to talk to you because I just, I'm at a point now to where, I mean, there's just nothing more that I can do to, to help. As much as I, as I want to to make things better and and uh, you know help, I just I just don't know what else to do. Oh, I think it was supposed to actually go this way, but at least that will help keep me from digging in my eye tonight. So let's go in the bedroom. So. You know, I, I have talked to y'all before about some of the things that I do for some of my subscribers who are in dire straits. Um, now, last year, I was having a friend of mine who was doing work for me, for my channel. You know, she did earn the money that I paid her, and it was difficult for me to come up with the, the $75 a month that I paid her, but... You know, she did work for it, and I did give it to her on a regular basis. But then we parted ways, and I was actually kind of glad because I was able to do some of the research and the, the YouTube research and things that I had to do for my channel on my own, and I really didn't need her anymore anyway. So that freed up that $75 a month, and it was a good thing because... Y'all know my income decreased substantially last year when YouTube enacted the um, COPA guidelines and our advertisers cut back on advertising and, and actually what they will pay for ads. I mean, my YouTube earnings decreased by half. I mean, some months I'd be lucky if I, if I, brought, if I earned $400. 
but some of my subscribers, they just don't have money for food. And y'all, I just can't stand it when I know that somebody is hungry and they need money for food. Now, nobody has asked me for money. I've, you know, given it to them freely, you know, whenever I can, whenever I have it. Sometimes I don't have it and I, and I give them the money and then I end up having to borrow money from Jill for gas and food. So I have been donating, um, you know, giving money to a couple of my subscribers just so that they will have, you know, 40 50 sometimes $60 towards the end of the month to hold them over until they get their check. Well, today, I was wondering why I kept getting checks from my subscriber, and she's young, but she and her husband are both disabled, and she does have a grown son and a grandchild, and I don't think her her, her oldest son, I'm not sure if he keeps a regular full-time job or not, but she does do a lot of babysitting for the granddaughter, and she had told me today that she was in bed. She was so depressed she couldn't get out of bed, and she does suffer from severe depression and agoraphobia and, and other, you know, mental illnesses. And so I told her, I said, well, you know, just get up and go, at least go take a shower. And I was really having trouble communicating with her because we were texting and I couldn't see good to begin with. So she did that and then she finally did fess up and tell me what had really happened. And that was that the furniture store had come and repossessed her bed. So here is a woman now in her 40s and her husband, both disabled, and now they have no bed to sleep in. And she said she had paid almost $1,000 over the last two years on the bed, and she only owed another 200 and a little over $200, and the furniture company just wouldn't give her any more time to pay for it. So that has upset me. You know, that this grown woman who's a good friend of mine and been a subscriber of mine for over two years, that I couldn't do anything to help her to keep her bed. You know, I'm really struggling right now myself to pay for this surgery. It it was $1,600 for this eye, and then it's going to be another $1,600 um, by, on December the 7th for, for my right eye. I don't have that kind of money. I'm going to have to borrow it or... Uh, I don't even know if I can get a bank loan. I guess I could try. I haven't, I don't really have bad credit. I just have no credit. You know, I just pay cash for everything. I really haven't had a credit card in a long time. The one that I did have, I paid, that I did have, I paid it off. You know, and I can't keep asking my daughter for money. So where's the money going to come from for, for all of this? I mean, this is nothing. I, I can even wait if I have to for my right eye. It's, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to worry about that. What I'm worried about is my sweet friend, I'm gonna, we're going to call her Annie, I'm not going to reveal her real name, is having to sleep tonight with no bed to sleep in. And, and Zeus was telling me about uh, this food bank in Texas that cars were mild, were, were um backed up for miles and miles you know people are hungry people are really suffering um another good subscriber of mine i'm not going to give her name but she has worked for 30 years worked her whole life and she got laid off because of the covid 19 virus back in march she has had no income except for the little bit of stimulus money and now she's being evicted from her apartment she did I'll go to the judge and, you know, she had just done everything to try to keep a roof over her head. And she's being evicted December the 30th. And her electricity is being turned off on the day after Thanksgiving. And I told her, I said, I will pay your electric bill. But I'm wondering, can, can I really pay her electric bill? You know, I just want to help everybody, but... I have such limitations myself, I just don't know what to do. And I'm just so stressed and so upset about it. And I just want to ask y'all to please pray. You know, we really have to just turn all of this over to God. And it's hard for me to do. I just want to, to fix it myself. But I can't fix it. You know, it's 
it's just impossible. So I just want to ask y'all to please pray for, we're going to call her Annie, and God knows exactly who I'm talking about. And my other sweet subscriber who has worked her entire life, over 30-something years, and she has COPD, she has all these medical problems. Let's just pray that she can at least uh, get some type of temporary assistance and and that her electricity will not be turned off the, at the day after Thanksgiving. It just can't be. You know, she can't lose her apartment. She can't be thrown out on the street. You know, my heart is so heavy. I'm so worried and so stressed. You know, there are people going to bed hungry tonight. We just, you know, we live in our own little cocoons. And we just don't see, you know, everything that's out there. And, and it's bad. It's real bad. And we just have to go to God in prayer. And y'all, please just pray with me now. My dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, I just pray that you will help me to just put aside all of my worries and all the little nitpicking things that I worry and stress about every every day when they, they are just nothing compared to what my friend Annie is going through tonight with having her bed repossessed and not having enough food to eat. And she lives in an area where there is a food desert. You know, it's not easy to get to a food bank. It's not easy for her to get food. Uh, and there are so many nights that she has to go to bed hungry, dear God. I pray that you will please just fix this and just provide a way, dear God, for her to be able to get food and to be able to get a bed to sleep on. She has so many health problems, Heavenly Father, and she needs a good, comfortable bed. And I pray for my other friend who is facing eviction and who is facing having her electricity turned off and who is having to stand in long lines at food banks to feed herself and 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 her family dear god please just provide for everyone who is in dire straits tonight and who is in such dire need and dear god i pray for karen lara's son who has just contracted COVID-19 and he has diabetes and these health issues. Heavenly Father, please just help him to be able to fight this virus. Please just heal him. And dear God, please just keep little Ollie and the rest of um, Karen's family safe. Dear God, please protect them from this COVID-19. I just pray for everyone, dear God, tonight who is suffering and in pain and for all of those who are hungry. Please, dear God, just help us and just heal our world. And it's all of these things I pray in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Good night, everybody, and may God bless you.